The standoff between Russia and the West over Ukraine is one of the most severe crises between the two sides in decades. Hungary is among the countries involved in intense diplomacy in recent days. And joining me now with the Hungarian government's perspective is its foreign affairs minister, Peter Seato. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, to begin with, this is a critical moment for Europe. It's a critical moment for Ukraine with around 130,000 Russian troops positioned on its borders. It's roundly being seen as a crisis. What is Hungary's stance on this? Look, we see the tension uh, is being uh, more and more serious uh, in the eastern part of the continent, which is a really, really bad news uh, for us uh, Hungarians. You know, we are living in the neighborhood of Ukraine. We are living in Central Europe. And uh, we have uh, still, unfortunately, uh, some memories uh, about the Cold War uh, period of time, many decades uh, where we suffered a lot. That's why we don't want this time, these times to come back. We ask the, the urge, the international community to do its best uh, in order to uh, avoid the Cold War to return avoid even the psyche of the Cold War uh, to return because we have learned it uh, from history, unfortunately very, very clearly, that whenever there is a East to West conflict, the countries of Central Europe usually lose and we don't want to be uh, losers anymore. So that's why for us it's really crucial and vital that diplomacy and the diplomatic efforts continue and avoid any violent actions uh, in the future. If there are violent actions, we can only be losers of that. Now, on the 1st of February, Prime Minister Orban met with President Putin in Moscow, around five hours of intense discussions between the two leaders, and after which there was a press conference during which Prime Minister Orban said he did not see any intention of Russia to invade. Now, I have to say that is a very different assessment to Western allies. So uh, what was it that President Putin then said to Prime Minister Orban to give that picture? Mm. Look, first of all, I think the, uh, the Hungarian model does definitely prove that uh, there is a uh, chance uh, for even EU and NATO member states uh, to have good relationship with Russia, a relationship uh, based on mutual respect and uh, mutual trust. We have uh, invested a lot of efforts uh, in this relationship uh, in the recent years while being good and reliable allies both within European Union and, uh, and NATO. When it comes to, um, when it comes to the question uh, whether Russia would like to um, invade um, Ukraine or whether Russia would like to get into a war uh, in, in Ukraine, uh, we hope uh, that uh, the answer will be no for, for a long time uh, hope, in the, in you, the you future. You hope, sir, but I'm trying future. to understand if there and, were assurances yeah. given. Well, uh, this was the uh, statement of, uh, of President Putin during the meeting, no question. That's why Prime Minister has um, uh, mentioned that. Uh, I do believe that the more we speak, the more we talk to each other, the more efforts we put on diplomacy, uh, the bigger chance we, as a whole world or whole Europe, will have to come to a uh, peaceful settlement uh, to this um, uh, crisis. That's why we were very happy that uh, following the visit of uh, Prime Minister Orban, uh, President Macron has also uh, visited Moscow. We understood that uh, they had a similarly long discussion uh, uh, during uh, yesterday or day before yesterday. We are happy with the news that the uh, German federal, ch federal chancellor is planning also to, uh, to visit Moscow next week. We are happy that the high-ranking officials, uh, Secretary of Defense and Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the uh, United Kingdom are going to visit. So I think the more meetings, the more visits, the more dialogue is the better. Um, but let's just say push comes to shove then and the worst case scenario does happen and Russia does go forward and further invade Ukraine. In that case then, uh, what will Hungary do as part of the EU, as part of NATO? Will it support sanctions? Look, uh, we don't even want to think about that because I understand that from here... But surely you have to plan. Yeah, but I understand that from here, from France, even from the United States, so, so f from countries which are hundreds or even thousands of kilometers away uh, from Ukraine, it's easy to speak about worst case scenarios. It's, it's, it seems uh, that it's not irresponsible to put uh, a news on the web page that the invasion has already started. But, you know, for us in the region, it's not fun. For us uh, in the region, it's our life 
So, uh, so, so we, we, we have to do our best in order to avoid the worst case scenario. We have to invest in diplomacy, we have to invest in dialogue. So, so that's why we urge, ask the Russian Federation and our Western allies, the big countries, the strong countries, not to give up the hope uh, of peaceful settlement, to the contrary, uh, to, talk to, uh, to talk to each other. Because once again, I want to underline that for us, rather small Central European countries, uh, it can be extremely dangerous if violent uh, actions uh, take place. So let's avoid the worst case scenario by any means. But what about sanctions? And that was my question, yes yeah, yeah. or no? Sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, um, sanctions have been in place. Uh, against the Russian Federation, further right? Further sanctions? Yeah, sorry. Would but you support but further I, I think, that, you know, first, uh, sanctions uh, can or should be made only in case something happens, okay? This is number one. Number two, when it comes to sanctions, it's obvious that these sanctions do not work out. But you supported the, the, them previously. The, look, Hungary because, yeah, them because previously. We, we were part of the. Uh, we didn't, they didn't want to break the European unity. We never vetoed. We always aligned uh, with this decision. We were. We, we never vetoed the decision. But look, I mean, if you look at the sanctions themselves, it's a failure. They don't work out. They are unsuccessful because if you look at the um, look at the trade volume between big Western European countries, including France, by the way, with the Russian Federation, you will see the figures and you will see how much the trade between France and the Russian Federation, the trade between Germany and the Russian Federation has increased since the sanctions have been in place. So my position is that if we speak about further sanctions, it's absolutely necessary to see an honest analysis of the impacts of the sanctions which have been in place. Well, let's talk about other measures then, because there are measures that can be taken. And Hungary, as a NATO member, for example, could accept to take more NATO troops on its soil. This is something that other countries have agreed to, Romania, Bulgaria. Will Hungary also agree to host more NATO troops? No, we have not agreed to that, and we will not agree, uh, because uh, we have already NATO troops on the territory of the country, which is the Hungarian army. And the Hungarian armed forces uh, are in a proper shape uh, to guarantee the security of the country. So we don't need additional troops uh, on the territory of Hungary. We have ongoing cooperation within NATO uh, with, with the fellow member states on training or That's rotation. That's a very strong line, though, be it bearing in mind that you are a NATO member and that you're also a member of the EU. And what I'm trying Absolutely. to understand is, in this current crisis, are you actually closer than to this membership and the EU and NATO um, or Russia? Well, we are, come on, we are members of NATO and we are members of the European Union. But once again, I want to underline that the Hungarian armed forces are in a proper shape to guarantee the security of our country. So uh, if, uh, if they were not in that shape, then this question whether to accept further troops uh, would make sense. But in this case, it doesn't make sense because we can protect ourselves. Now, you are here in Lyon today for a meeting, an EU meeting about the future of health policy when it comes to pandemics, preparedness, vaccines. And Hungary used the Russian vaccine during the pandemic. Um, would you support further collaboration between the European Union with Russia on health issues such as these in the future? Yeah, absolutely, because, uh, you know, vaccine must not be considered as a political statement. I myself have been vaccinated uh, partly by Sputnik and the reason for that was that at that time, you might remember, beginning of last year, there was a severe shortage of vaccines in Europe because the Western deliveries were either late or were cancelled or uh, had much uh, lower quantity compared to the contracts. So uh, we have decided at that time to give a chance to the Hungarian people to uh, take advantage of other types of vaccines as well, namely Sputnik from Russia and Sinopharm from China. And you know what, if you look at the figures in Hungary, it's obvious that, um, that Sputnik and Sinopharm uh, have been working out very well. Uh, they are safe, they are effective. So I think that the only reason why these are not recognized or just partly recognized uh, is purely political. And, and uh, once again, I want to underline that when it's about the lives of the people, when it's about saving the lives of the people, uh, vaccines must not be taken into consideration as political statements. So I, I really do hope, I really do hope that at least on that, on saving the lives of the people, on fighting the pandemic, there would be a rational cooperation between East and West, which is the utmost interest of the Central European region. All right, Peter Seato, Hungary's foreign minister, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much.